Welcome to Midwest Sports Net. I'm Joey McWilliams. I am privileged to be joined on the summit today by Coach Kurt Hines from Coronado High School in San Diego, California. And Coach, I have seen you on Twitter a number of times and, and even more so recently, and, and your following is just growing and growing. I want to start right there because you had a video that came out about 10 months ago about having a player come into your office and quit before practice and you said you couldn't be happier. So I want to start right there and talk about that because that video went viral. And I'm not just talking 70 or 80,000 views or anything like that. As, as of this recording, it is near 2 million views. So it's gotten a lot of traction. Talk about that video and what it was about. Yeah, first off, Joey, I really appreciate you having me on. So I it, truly humbled and honored to be with you. So thank you very much. Mm -hmm. um, that that particular video for, for any of your listeners that aren't I know many people aren't aware of it obviously uh yeah as you mentioned I had a young man come in he had played for me for a year already he and his brother moved in to Coronado uh a year prior to that his brother was a stud stud football player always happy always just on fire and one of the, one of those young men that you just he's a blessing to coach not just because of the athlete he is but just just his persona persona just his character and, and the light he had within him uh his younger brother um, just by a year, was a big kid, good-sized kid, but never seemed happy, ne ne never seemed with it. And, and I try, I've been blessed to coach high school football going on my 26th season now to, to always make a connection with our players because I can, we can dive into this a little bit deeper later if you want, but I always, I believe all success in life, in marriage, in work, in sports is about relationships. Mm -hmm. So as much as I tried to pour into him and, and pull out of him, he was always respectful, but never seemed to be happy. Just, just showed up to practice late, um, kind of went through the motions, tried to fight for him to get reps in practice and games, and never really seemed that excited about it. So one particular day he came into practice, and we always tell our young men and young women, football is not for everyone. You know, if, if you decide that you're not passionate about it anymore, don't lie to yourself and lie to me and say, hey, I want to focus on grades. Because no one goes home at 3.30 after school and does, does schoolwork till 9.30 at night. And I always did better academically during the football season because I, I had to be structured with my time. Mm -hmm. So he came in with his things washed and folded in his bag. And I said, hey, you know, I had about 15 minutes before practice started. I almost said his name. But I said, hey, sit down for a second. I said, tell me where your heart is. Like, what's going on? And he goes, I just, I coach, I don't know. It's like, you know, my brothers always love football. My fathers love football. My mothers love football. We're a football family. And he just hung his head. And I said, how about you? He said, I'm not really into a coach. I said, I'm proud of you. And you just saw, I just saw his whole countenance change. Just, just like a weight was lifted. And he just smiled for the first time in a year and a half, almost two years. I saw him genuinely smile. And that, it still gives me goosebumps now, <laughs> legit. Um, and I said, I can tell you how proud I am of you. And he looked at me kind of like shocked, like, wait, wait a minute, am I being punked or something? And I said, it takes courage. It takes courage to not just continue to do something because it's what your family or your brother or your girlfriend or the society thinks you should do. So I gave him a big hug and I said, Hey, listen, I am always here for you. I love you. I'm proud of you. And I was so excited for him. I said, do you mind if I share this? And he goes, no, that's great coach. So literally I, I took the video it was a one and done little selfie video and uh, posted it, went out to practice and had a great practice. I uh, did talk to our team because he said I could share it. So I, I shared it with the team also. And I said, make sure that you don't treat him any differently. Make sure you love him in the hallways, love right. him at the lunch table and still be there for him. And practice was over, got in my truck, came home. And I, I think it had, you know, in less than a three hour period, something like, I, I don't know how many retweets, but several, several hundred um, in, in a short span. And I was like, dang, what's interesting about that, Joey, is a lot of support, a lot of, hey, good for you, coach. And, but there were people that either read the heading and didn't listen to the video yeah. and said, it said, how dare you, shaming you for being happy a young man quit or, you know. And then there were people that clearly watched the video and, and came at me, and I'm okay with that, but said, hey, congratulations, you're a loser coach, you're teaching kids, it's okay to quit. And, and that's okay. I realize in social media, if we're going to put ourselves out there, we've got to be open to, oh, yeah. to whatever, whatever comes our way. I, I did respond to people, and, and I never have, and I pray I never will, get into Twitter fights or social media fights with people. But I did say to several people who some came around and some said, no, you're still horrible. But I said, hey, listen, how many of us dated one young woman through high school or college and didn't quit the relationship but realized that wasn't for us or we weren't for them and moved on until we found our spouse? How many of us had other jobs throughout our careers and we left not because we were quitting one job per se, 
you know, hopefully we did it the right way and gave two weeks notice, but we found something that we were passionate about. Um, the thing I love about it is he, we still keep in touch. And uh, his brother, who's still, who's playing college football now, came by practice during spring ball. And, and I asked him how his brother was doing, the young man that quit. And he just smiles from ear to ear. He's a great coach. He's doing great. So it's, my, I guess my message with that tweet was, we've got, we only have one shot at this thing called life. You know, <laughs> just, just, we've got to passionately follow our dreams um, and make sure it doesn't hurt others. But we're not always going to make everyone else happy. And, and we live a life that tries to please everyone else instead of our savior and ourselves. We're going to fail miserably. So I, I was and still am. So it's just so proud of him. Well, Coach, obviously football is big, and that's a big part of your life. And I, I appreciate you taking time during the summer to do this. I know you've, you had act activities going on last week, next week coming up. I mean, there's a lot going on. But it's not the only thing you do. I mean, you clearly are, are a motivational speaker, and you can just tell that by listening to you through this first segment here that, that that's something that you do well. You motivate people. Uh, you try to bring out the best in them no matter what. Your following has grown in the last 10 months, like you said. I mean, just immediately people were retweeting this. And right now, again, as of this recording, it's more than 61,000 followers on Twitter alone. And, and you put something out there pretty regularly. So you, you're able to get your message across. What is what is this then meant for you and what you do on so many different levels? Yeah, it, for me, it's, it's an extension of coaching. Uh, I am passionate about the game of football. I love the off-season weight training. I love the game planning. I love the coaches' meetings, meeting with the parents, players. I love the physicality of the game, the violence. It's, it's controlled chaos. I love the violence of the game. Um, but for me, it's a platform. It's a, it's a platform to share my faith with others. And, and, and I say that with a little air of caution because I have been blessed to coach young men and young women who love Christ, some who I've never heard other than just it being the name being used in vain. Um, I've coached people who are atheists, who are Jewish, all, all Buddhists, all different backgrounds. So I, I try very carefully to wear my heart in my sleeve. That's just who I am and put my faith out there, but not to force it down anyone's throat. Right. Uh, the thing about social media I love is um, we had, I think it was, actually, I think it was just shortly after the video you, you mentioned came out, one of the local San Diego news stations wanted to come to practice and interview me and um, the, the young woman who was doing the interviewing said, Hey, can we talk to a few players? I said, sure. So I just choose, I chose two or three players and I was interviewed, ran back to practice during practice. They were interviewed and I didn't see it till the night or two afterwards. And one of our quarterbacks, and I'll, I'll never forget it. Um, he had, and I'm paraphrasing, but the young woman asked him like, Hey, what's it like to have coach Hines as a coach? And he said, the cool thing is he goes, what the world sees on social media, we see every day. And that meant the world to me because yeah. I think sometimes, and I'm sure I'm guilty of it too, we put our A game on social media and we put a, unintentionally sometimes, we put a facade out there that we're something that we're not. And I love that. I believe the great majority of those I'm blessed to coach and coach with see that I'm transparent and I'm who I, I'm who I claim to be, if you will, yeah. on social media. Um, it, it's great because it, things like this, we would have never met had it not been for social media. I, I've been blessed to, uh, to speak all over the United States and the Bahamas a few years ago, um, just simply through connections through social media. Um, and, and I realized that some people hate social media and say, oh, it's, it's, it's the devil and some people love it. I, I, for me, I think social media is like a loaded gun. You know, in the right hands at the right time, it's going to open some doors and save some lives, so to speak. And in the wrong hands, it can cost you a job or a scholarship or a relationship. Mm -hmm. So just like anything else, you got to use it for, for the good that it's, whether, whether it was created to, to be good or not, I think if we use it with good intentions, we can do a lot of good. I agree entirely, entirely on that and every point you made. And and I hope that if you see good in me on online, in whatever facet, it's the same you, good you would see if, if we saw each other in town somewhere on, on the street or, you know, in the grocery store, Walmart, wherever. Coach, I, one of the things that that I've seen a couple of times in, in recent tweets and it still sounds weird talking about that. We should be talking about football, but the, we're talking about tweets right now. We'll get to the football here in, the, in a moment too, but uh, the, this may lead right into it. 1%, 1%. I like that because it's, well, I, I want to hear your thought on it. 1%. Yeah, the, the 1% for me comes down to my own personal experience throughout life. I think all too often we, society and I, we overestimate what we can accomplish in a month or three months 
and we, we, whether it's a fitness plan or whatever it is, and we quit after, you know, not seeing the results we want, or we gravely underestimate what we can accomplish in a year. And I, I think the 1% ties into, I, I have a passion for strength and conditioning with our players because I have a chance to really connect with them and work out with them. But I always say that our two and a half, the little two and a half pound plate, the smallest plate in the weight room can be our best friend because as we progress in our lifts, so often we add the fives, the tens, the 25s, the 45s, and then our form starts to suffer. If we just add a little bit at a time, we can get better. And it's not overwhelming for us. The 1% for me is as a husband, as a father, as a grandfather, as a teacher, as a coach, if I can strive every morning to wake up and become 1% better, 1% is so insignificant in the here and now, it seems. But after a day, a week, a month, a year, 1% better every day, we're, we're going to change our lives and change the yeah. people's lives around us and change the world. So from a football standpoint, I always tell our young men, hey, when we step on the field, let's get 1% better today. 1% better. And that may be through physical reps. It may be through mental reps. But if we you know, just set the standard and the goal of getting 1% better, we're going to be hard to beat on and off the field. And, I, that, and that means a lot. It really does. That, that actually encourages me and it has encouraged me this week. But just hearing it from you, I, I, I'm, I'm, I want to be 1% better by the time the sun goes down tonight <laughs> and, and find some way in that. We're speaking with Coach Kurt Hines here on the Summit on Midwest Sports Net. And I encourage you, please do like this video and please take the time to, to subscribe to the channel. We have crossed 1,000 subscribers now, so we're heading for 2,000 right now. And you can be a part of that. We would appreciate that. We talk about small college sports and a whole lot more throughout the Midwest and beyond. We're definitely beyond that today, visiting with Coach Hines. Coach, one of the things then, as we look toward football a little bit right now, and I, I want to get your, your take on this, <coughs> excuse me, that is that we're midsummer. We're, we're midway through the summer right now. And I'm sure that as you've been with the program for a little while, having coached now well into three decades, but you've been with this program for a little while, you had an idea in the spring what the fall might look like. And you had an idea through the summer what the fall might look like. But do the players, you know, have an opportunity to maybe change things around, change their their destiny, if you will, on the team during the summer and even into the fall? What can they do to rise uh, along the way? Yeah, great question. So we're actually in our dead period now, or some schools, some states call it no contact period. In California, we have a two-week period. Each school sets their own date, but we're today is our last day of the two-week dead period. So we've been on a little break from our players and them a break from us. Um, but yeah, they have a chance all the time. I always tell our parents uh, during our parent meet the coaches information nights at the beginning of each season, hey, email me, call me, text me about anything, anything you want, football related, personal, whatever, to help benefit your son or daughter. But don't ever email me about playing time. And they all laugh and you know chuckle. I said, no, I'm not kidding. Do not ever email me about <laughs> playing time. Um, and I, and I, I stress to them, to the parents and the players, they have an opportunity to show because many parents say, well, you know, they're not starting on Friday night. How can they show how good they are? They can show how the good they are Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday in practice, Saturday morning in practice. Um, they have an opportunity to compete in the classroom. We do weekly grade checks. I know a lot of programs do to make sure they're they're not just not just to make sure they're academically eligible, make sure they're thriving in the classroom and striving for greatness. Um, but yeah, they, they have an opportunity to get one percent better every single day. And we, I mentioned just a few moments ago about the strength and conditioning. In the 25 plus years I've coached high school football, I've always been the strength coach. I'm not the smartest at it. I am not, and I, I always tell people kind of jokingly, but very serious at the same time, if that makes sense. I'm an expert in absolutely nothing, but passionate about everything. And I've learned a lot over the years. And like we all do, you learn a lot from, from others. You learn a lot from your own mistakes. Um, but one of the reasons I love the strength and conditioning is because by doing that year round with our players in season and out of season, I have a chance to not just lift with them, but mo most importantly, to train beside them and talk to them about life. Nothing related to football and just to find out what gets them to tick, what really motivates them and drives them to help them find their, their why, their reason for it. So yeah, they, they have an opportunity to get 1% better every single day. And, and for, for me, that's all encompassing, not just as a football player, but let's get 1% better as a student body, as a member of our community. And, and you said something, too, that, that struck me recently. You, you had mentioned we're always being evaluated. And yeah. that's something that stood out to me, too. And, and I realize and I recognize, you know, no matter where we are, God knows where we are. And, and, he, and he always sees what we're doing and, and what we're not doing. And, and he knows our heart. But you know what? People watch us as well. Yeah. 
Yeah, and that that goes back for me. Uh, we joke about it. I, my wife and I have four children. Uh, our youngest, with three daughters and one son. Our youngest is 24. Our oldest is 31. When they were growing up with dad being a, a, in New Hampshire where we raised our children, a football coach, they couldn't go anywhere without someone like, oh, you're Coach Hines' daughter or you're Coach Hines' son. And sometimes they loved it or if they were at a party they shouldn't have been or something. <laughs> sometimes they were not a fan of, of being recognized as, as my son or daughter. Um, and it happened where our oldest daughter, Hallie, came out to San Diego State uh, years ago and she went to apply for a job and he's looking at her application he goes oh bedford new hampshire or golf's down new hampshire and do you know coach hines and she goes oh my gosh she's like yeah, i move across the country and we said we said to them people are always watching you whether you're a coach's child or not doesn't matter um and i think sometimes people look at that as a negative like oh we're being watched no if, if we have if we love who we are and we have good intentions that that can set us on fire that that can ignite us and drive us to do more and be more um, I just got off the past three days of uh, coaching at the FCA, Fellowship of Christian Athletes, football camp um, at San Diego State. And it was a tremendous opportunity because I was coaching young men from all over California, some from Arizona, some from up in San Fran. And the very first day I mentioned, hey, everything you do is an evaluation, that there might be a coach at our, our camp right now who's a high school coach that three years from now is on a college staff that remembers how you conducted yourself, how you went about your language or whatever and uh as i shared in the video there was a young man that was the first practice that lunch just a few hours later who i'm just kind of my head's on a swivel looking around and watching people uh not to try to catch anyone doing anything bad but just watching people being observant and he went left his table went to a different table and picked up several pieces of trash and just threw them away and i just watched him said nothing went out for a second session that day and uh singled him out and, and i think it's a great thing to sing, single people out for good things. You know, if it's a situation that is, is not too uh, positive, I think we should do that privately. But I uh, singled him out and he was just glowing from ear to ear and uh, told him, I said, everything you do is an evaluation. And as Christians, I mean, especially in today's day and age, and I, and I won't get political or preachy, but uh, I, th I think we're in a day and age here where anything and everything is acceptable except for being a Christian. If you're a Christian, man, that that is whoa, that's that, that's that's crazy, and you can call yourself whatever you want, you know, but that that's frowned upon. And I th I think we have two choices as Christians: we can kind of hide in the shadows and keep our faith, you know, tight to ourselves and not let anyone else know because we don't want to offend anyone, or without trying to offend others, just sh put our put the light in the hill and, and say, yeah, this is who I am. I'm proud of it. This is this is who I am. I am I am a I am far from perfect. I am a sinner saved by grace. And I'm a Christian, not because I'm better than anyone, but I'm a Christian because I believe in my savior and I need my savior. You know, I, I, I want to read your Twitter, Twitter profile in light of that then. And uh, it starts off Christian in all caps, husband, father, papa, head coach, Coronado football teacher and keynote speaker. And I, I believe you have it in the right order. And that was one of the things I wanted to, to give you a chance to talk about today. And I'll tell you, coach, I, I think you would probably fall into this. I, I, I spoke with a coach one time prior to an interview and I said, now listen, you can talk about Jesus on this channel if, you, if you'd like to. And he, he just looked at me and smiled and said, Joey, you weren't going to stop me anyway. So I thought, well, that's, that's all right. I feel like you probably fall into that same category, but uh, that's how it's listed as to what you, you present to the world. Yeah, and, and the reason I appreciate you noticing that, it's the little things that sometimes we don't realize people notice. It's, it's heartbreaking, but how often do we see, you know, we're talk, talking sports right now, and it happens in, in actors and musicians, but how many people do we see that are at the top of their game, making millions of dollars, playing professional sports, whatever, whatever it may be, or coaching professional sports, and their playing days are over, and you hear about them taking their lives, or you hear about depression and anxiety, which affects all of us in one way or another, through loved ones or ourselves. The reason for me I put that first, and I put it first, most importantly in my heart, is because I love being called coach. I, I love it as much, to be honest, as being called dad or papa by my grandsons, or you know, because I understand that those who I'm blessed to coach know that as passionate as I am about the game, I'm more passionate about the people. And sooner or later, my coaching days will be over, whether that's yeah. in 20 years or 30 years, whenever God decides to take me home, you know? And if we put our identity in what we do, as opposed to who and whose we are, it's a dangerous thing because our, our careers, our playing days are going to be over at some point. And then, we have, then we're left trying to find out who am I? How do I define myself? And 
as much as I love being a coach, I am a Christian first and foremost. And, and I think with best of intentions, I think so many coaches say, hey, I'm a coach who happens to be a Christian. Well, I'm a Christian who chooses to be a coach. And, mm-hmm. and for me, there's a big difference there. And you know, I'm reminded, I don't remember where I read this, uh, but one of my favorite quotes says, preach the gospel in all things and when necessary, use, use words. And I love that because we need to use our words at times. But how many of us know people who dress the part on Sunday and call themselves Christian, but then you see them behind closed doors and the, the words they use and the way they treat others is nothing related to being Christ-like. Mm-hmm. For me, I, I can preach all I want, but my actions dang well better match up to the words that come out of yeah. my mouth or that's going to turn people away from Christ. Right. No, I, I, I understand. Well, Coach, listen, I, I'm, I'm very grateful for your time here during the summer as you're saying that the, the dead period is just about done, so you're about to kick things sure. into high gear again, I'm, I'm really sure. So thank you, first off, for the time. And I wanted to give you a chance then to, to talk about maybe something that's going on for you. What's happening for you? What would you like to promote today? As corny as this sounds, promote kindness, promote love. And, and I know that's not really where you're going with that, but just, <laughs> if, if anyone's listening, they only take one thing away from what I share is, is I think the media at, at large wants us to believe there's more hate and division in the world. And there is a lot of hate and a lot of division, but I think there's more good and love out there than people realize. So, so I would first and foremost promote, go out there and be a good person, love others. Uh, from a selfish standpoint, um, I did just finish writing a book uh, that, uh, is in the very beginning processes of, uh, publishing. So I'm not sure if it's going to be out in three months, six months, whatever, but if anyone wants to follow me on social media, it's coach Kurt Hines, K U R T H I N E S. Um, and I, I just love connecting with people. Um, it's, it's, it's a, it's a gift, this life we've been given. And I, I think the more you connect with others and the more you can learn from others and, and share with others, the better we all are. All right, Coach, let me ask you really quickly. Do you have this number right off the top of your head? What's the first game of the season? When, when do the fans come out and watch you all play? <laughs> well, I, I have this one for a specific reason. August, <laughs> August 13th is the first uh, – it's called the San Diego Kickoff Classic. It's a preseason game playing against uh, El Cap, which is a great program, uh, higher division than us. They're, they're coached by a great, great man, great men, um, and I won't be there. Um, the reason I had that uh, in my mind is my father just passed away about a week ago. So uh, the celebration of life back in Rhode Island is going to be on that day. And uh, as I, I shared with some of my assistant coaches, um, they're like, oh, my gosh, you're not going to be there. See, guys, if, if it was a state championship game, I would not be there. You know, as, as important as football is to me, I'm not going to miss the, the celebration, the funeral, you know, celebration of life of my father. So uh, – I'm excited about the season. We we could talk a whole another three episodes. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm I'm amped up. We we uh, we've had a great off season with our young men and young women, and uh, just just I'm ready to go. Well, I would be very grateful if there were another opportunity to talk with you here on Midwest Sports Net. So you you have an open invitation, Coach, to come back here on the show. I would love it, Coach Kurt Hines from Coronado High School in California. We appreciate you being on the show. Thanks to everyone for watching today, and again, please like the video. Please do subscribe to the channel. That will help us out a lot. Thanks for watching. God bless you. Have a great day.